welcome back to my kitchen. Happy Thanksgiving Eve. You guys, I am so excited and I'm so glad that you all joined me for another edition in my series of Thanksgiving holiday recipes 2020. So it's another day. I'm back in this kitchen again. And like I said, y'all, we can't do Thanksgiving without no macaroni and cheese. So that's what we will be doing today. And I will be doing mac and cheese like y'all already know. Like my mama used to do it. Real simple and easy recipe. But before I get started, and you guys, I probably should have videoed this. But I didn't because I have already, I've already done a video where, where I've done roast beef. But I have been slow roasting this roast beef since 1.30 this morning and it's 12.30 and I'm just taking it out of the oven. I want you guys to peep at it real quick and then we're going to get back on task, okay? I know this ain't what we're talking about, but this is what we've to look at. I want y'all to look at this slow roast. Roast beef. And I really wish I had thought to share it with you guys, but because I had done one already, a recipe on my channel, I didn't do it, but that one was in the Instant Pot, so I should have. You guys, I apologize. I will do it at another time, but I want you guys to look at how tender this roast beef is. Let's see. See if we can get in a little bit more. Look, you guys. And because I had so much to cook, I just did it in a in an oven bag. Look at that. Mm. Ooh, we y'all left some good eating right there. And I do the roast beef in addition to the ham and the turkey because my dad loves 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 roast beef. So now I do that every Thanksgiving as well. Okay. Back to this macaroni and cheese because I'm getting ready to be running my mouth. I'm getting ready to go on and add my noodles. I've already boiled some of them because I have so many of them to do. Um, but you guys always add a little bit of oil to your water. Just a little bit. And then I always salt my water. Okay. Add a little bit of salt to your water. And what I like to do is taste it because I like to taste my water to make sure that I can taste the salt. I don't want it over powerful, but I want enough salt to where as when I boil my noodles, it's going to, um, you know, get the salt in my noodles. Okay, now I can taste that that water is salty. Again, I have already boiled some of these, so we use the Zitti noodles. My mom always used these large noodles, and I'm going to do two boxes. I've already done part of this one, because I have to make a lot of mac and cheese. And again, I want to go and get these, this on while I'm in my mouth, okay? Okay, so two boxes of Zitti noodles. By all means, y'all already know, you can use whatever kind of noodle that you want. You like the little elbow macaroni, the pasta shells, the little squiggly spiral noodles, whatever you want to use, whatever tickles your fancy, that's what you use. But we always use the large ZT noodles. Now, unlike most people, we don't do our macaroni and cheese with eggs. No eggs. Very, very simple. We use salt, salt, pepper, some butter, and cheese. And our cheese preference Preferences are sharp cheddar and also mozzarella. These are the two cheeses that my mom used in her 
macaroni and cheese and if you've looked at my other, other videos I don't know if you know by now but this Thanksgiving and everything that I'm cooking I, I have referenced my mom a whole lot these are fond happy memories that I have my mom cooking and the things I've learned so I'm just sharing it with you guys okay but you can feel free to use whatever kind of cheeses that you like to use I have used other cheeses before um, but today I'm just going to do sharp and I'm going to do mozzarella. And then we just use milk. And I use 2% milk because that's the kind of milk that we drink. You can always use milk. You can use like milk and some heavy whipping cream. Whatever you choose to do works. Okay. Now because I'm making such a large batch of macaroni and cheese. I'm going to try to do one small pan because, again, I'm feeding my family, so my brothers are going to come by and pick up food for their families since we can't get together this year because of the Rona. But anywho, what's most important is that everyone is safe and well, right? Absolutely. Okay. So, but because I'm doing such a big pan, I'm trying to give you guys some measurements. And I keep saying, you guys, I'm that southern cook that we just cook. I don't measure a lot. So, I'm trying to get something together uh, for you guys. Where's that pan I had? Okay. So, some of it will be, the majority of it will be in this big pan. So, this little pan right here, I'm going to fix as well. And I'm going to give you some guys, give you guys some measurements based on this little pan. For example, if you take three cups, now these are the ziti noodles that we use. If you were to take three cups of the dry noodles, when you boil them, they're going to yield about six and a half cups. Okay? So dry is only three cups, but when you boil them, it's going to be about six and a half, maybe seven, but definitely about six and a half. Okay? So this pan that I'm going to do here, will be based on uh, six and a half cups of, let's just start with the dry because you're gonna start with the dry before you boil them. So three cups of dry ziti noodles. I don't know if that changes if you use if you use the smaller noodles or what, I don't know. But based on the big noodles. So we're gonna do this pan and it will yield about six and a half cups of cooked noodles. And this is the pan that I'm gonna use to try my best to give you guys some measurements, okay? Okay, so, now one thing that my sister and I have started adding uh, when we do macaroni and cheese, and I actually got this from my baby sister. She likes to add Italian seasoning, and I love it too. So we add a little bit of Italian seasoning, you know, hey, it's pasta, give it that little pasta flair, if you will, with the Italian seasoning. So we will add a little bit of this as well. Mama didn't do this. Okay. She just kept it simple. And you guys, if you really think about it, our good southern cooks, you know, when it comes to our moms and grandmothers and great-grandmothers, they were wonderful cooks. And they kept it so simple. Sometimes, you guys, we be trying to do too much. We be trying to do the most. And then y'all be messing stuff up. Be trying to do something all extra special and fancy for the family reunion and for Thanksgiving. And you're back. I'm going to need you to keep it simple. Because now you done messed up the macaroni and cheese. Okay? So, my noodles are going to boil maybe another um, five minutes. Let me set the timer. Because you don't want to overboil them. Okay? You don't want to overboil them because you're going to bake them. What did they say? You want them a little al dente? Is that what they say? Girl, you just don't want to overcook them. That's what that means. Okay? Alright. So, we're going to let this keep boiling. And I'm going to use my little doohickey here. To grate my cheese. I don't know how much cheese I'm getting ready to use. I have seven pounds right here. But I'm not going to use all of it. But I have my little doohickey, you guys. Since I have so much cheese to grate. This is my little... Uh, this is my little Nutri, Nutri Slicer. I think I got it from... I don't know if it was Home Shopping Network or QVC. Somewhere, something like that. I've had it for years, so... I can't tell you. But it has these different little blades that you can attach that will slice and stuff. Ain't that all right? So I'm going to use this one to grate with because it has the larger hole. So that's the one I'm going to use in a few minutes. And, uh, wait a minute, it was something else 
I was going to say. Oh, as it pertains to the cheese. I like to grate my cheese. You guys, when you grate your cheese, my opinion, my experience, it makes the cheese, it's creamier. Because what happens is when you all buy that cheese that's already in pre-shredded in the bag, they use some type of starch or something they put on that that uh raw, a uh, raw, that a uh, raw cheese to preserve it. Because you've already grated, it's already grated and it's been hanging up in the grocery store for a long time. And if it's been in the grocery store for a long time, they, they need to preserve it. Okay, so I don't buy that in the bag. Take the t I take the time to grate my cheese. It don't take long. It don't take long. When you're in the kitchen cooking, y'all, you can't be trying to rush in the kitchen. Now, a good cook don't mind taking the time. You can't be doing all that rushing in the kitchen. That's how you mess stuff up, trying to hurry up and get done. So, take your time in the kitchen. And then, you know, take your time and cook. Everybody feel all that love. That love that you done cooked with. That's all right. Okay, so don't be in a hurry when you in the kitchen, especially not holiday meals. Now sometimes we all be in a hurry. I know I do sometimes, but meals like this, I just look forward to taking my time and just doing what I need to do in here in my happy place. Okay, so I'm gonna start grating my cheese while these noodles continue to boil. Okay, you guys, so that's all of the cheese that I think I'm going to use. It's all grated, and you'll notice that I did keep the mozzarella and the sharp cheese separated. And this is what I have left, and like I shared before, when I get, I buy my cheese in the block like that, and I cut it into little blocks, put it in the freezer, and that way I can just pull out what I want when I'm ready to use it. Do not mind grating the cheese because it literally only takes a few minutes, okay? So now I have put all of my noodles in, in the pan and although I salted the water, I want to put a little bit more salt in my noodles. And also, while they're warm, I'm going to go on and open up this stick of butter and put it in here too so it can get all melted. And this is the time I like to add any other seasonings that I may want, like the Italian seasoning. I'm just going to go on and sprinkle it in here. Totally optional. Black 
pepper. And I'm just going to stir this around to get all of my noodles coated in the butter and all of the other seasonings. Okay, and so I can give you guys some kind of measurements. I'm going to start with this little pan. And this is a little butter residue left on this butter packet. I'm just going to take it and rub it in this pan. Do, we don't use a what you call it a roux or cheese sauce don't do any of that I'm going to simply start by layering this um, this pan here and we usually start let's see if I can zoom you in a little bit I'm gonna start by adding a little bit of sharp cheddar on the bottom. And then I'm going to add some noodles. And I'm not going to like really overfill this Okay, now I'm going to add a layer of look at the mozzarella and we're going to add some more cheddar and I'm just, you know, kind of grabbing a handful. I'm just going to do two layers. And they're not real thick layers, okay? with another layer of mozzarella. And now I'm just going to top it off with cheddar. Again, these two layers were not very thick. pan like this, I suggest you only do two layers. And then as it pertains to the liquid, I'm going to start with one cup and then we're going to see what that looks like and see what it feels like. I usually do kind of tilt the pan to see if I can see the milk running. And I'm 
not seeing anything, so I think I'm okay to do. Okay, so that's one cup. not seeing any milk so I'm going to add just a little bit more. We're going to do a half a cup. I'm just now barely seeing the milk kind of run. Let me zoom in to see if I can show you guys exactly what I'm looking at, okay? Okay, as it pertains to the milk, what I do is I look, if you look right here to see if you see where the milk is, is uh, as a matter of fact, let's look in the corner and see if you kind of, can you guys kind of see the milk? You see the milk there? So that's kind of like a rule of thumb for me, if I can see it a little bit. Okay, you don't want too much. You see how that milk is kind of gathering there just a little bit? And you guys, it's, it's really hard to explain. So hopefully that made sense, you all. And as you bake it, it has to set, so you cannot dig into this as soon as it, it comes out. Um, let me add just a little bit more cheddar on the top. My oven has preheated to 350. I don't necessarily like to cook this really fast. As a matter of fact, I'm going to cook it on 325 because I want it to cook kind of slow because I want the cheeses, you know, to melt slow and incorporate with that milk. Okay. So we did two layers that were not really thick in this pan and layer it with the cheese and then we did a cup and a half of milk. That's about the best of a foundation I can give you guys. Okay. So... Then we're going to top it off with some black pepper. And uh, y'all know I need some parsley. There's my parsley. And some parsley. Just top it off with some parsley. Okay, again, when you bake this, it has to sit. You can't pull it out of the oven and dig right into it because you're going to see the milk just kind of run up and, it, you know, may look a little runny. But if you let it set, then um, mm, it should be fine. Okay. And I will admit, this is something that sometimes is just, you know, kind of hard to get right if you're not used to doing it and then you know that's why a lot of people use the eggs or the flowers or the the flour or the roux or cheddar sauce because you know it makes that macaroni and cheese firm up and give you know gives that consistency that you know a lot of people like and again there's no wrong way of do of doing it unless it's nasty unless your junk nasty if it's nasty then that's the wrong way <laughs> but if you like the roux and the cheddar and the by all means do that. I just wanted to share with you how we do our macaroni and cheese. And it's, it's just a simple recipe and it just doesn't have to be complicated. Okay, so, so now I'm going to just add the cheese to this other one and then we'll get both of them in the oven. And you guys, this one here, I didn't want to take the noodles back out of this pan. So I just put some cheese in there, kind of did this here to, to get it mixed up. And I'm going to pour some milk now so I can, you know, see what I'm doing before I cover it up. You know, put the top layer of the cheese on it. Just want to see what I'm looking like with my milk.
drop left in there. Okay. So you guys see the milk kind of down there in the corner. Can you see that a little bit? off with the rest of the cheese. Yes, we love it cheesy. top of it when it first starts cooking um, and because of some reason you know if it's cooking a little too fast or if I'm needing to cook it a little bit longer to kind of get that milk to absorb then the top of it won't you know it won't already have started browning so I just cover it up so that cheese can, you know, just kind of melt slowly without starting to brown because I can always, um, you know, once it's set enough, I can always put it under the broiler for a few minutes to get that cheese to start browning and bubbling on top if I need to. But if you do that, you got to watch it because that cheese will burn quick, fast, and in a hurry. So, again, I have my oven set on. 325 and that's just because I just wanted to cook slow I have time to let it do that and I'm um, probably gonna let it just hang out in there for maybe about maybe about 45 minutes and then I'll check it again okay I'm just gonna take the foil off now I've actually been trying to kind of multitask and this gave me a little bit more time to kind of cook this slow so now I'm going to turn it up to like 375 and then just let them brown. Okay, you guys, now that I've taken the foil off, this is what we're looking like. And I want you to kind of see the consistency of it. Um, And, you know, what we did with just the milk. You see that? See how cheesy it looks? And what I don't want to do is, I don't want it to get dry. See that? Don't want it to get dry. So, I love the how it's starting to brown around the edge. So what I'm gonna do now is just turn my oven up. I'm gonna turn it up on broil. Let me pull that one out for just a second. You guys can see what this one is looking like. 
And I just, you know, really think that's one thing about um, the mac and cheese. You know, you guys can kind of just put it in there and let it cook slow. Okay, you see how this one is looking creamy too? Let me put it on a other shelf rack and then kind of zoom in. Oh, I'm sorry. Give you, give you some light. How about that? Didn't have my light on. Okay. Now let's take a look. You see how it's creamy? Wait a minute. Let me see where the camera is. Okay. See how creamy that looks? And you see a little bit of the milk, but as it sets, that will continue. That will kind of firm up a little bit more. So I don't want to leave it in there much longer because I don't want it to dry all of the milk out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with this one and I'm just going to put it under the broiler just for a couple of minutes you guys that will happen really quickly so you definitely need to keep your eye on it just gonna get it just a little bit brown on the top and you guys I'm telling you it does not take long you hear the, hear the sizzle we're gonna take this one out And put this one in. Ooh, listen to that beautiful sizzle. Okay, so, and that's all. That's all I wanted to do. So I'm gonna. Cover them up now. Gotta look at that pretty macaroni and cheese. Mmm. Y'all know them edges just be the best. Well, you guys, I guess we're on to the next video. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe turn on the nosy bell that's your notification bell so you will be notified every time I upload thank you guys so much for watching we already look forward to you joining us again next time bye